Hello everyone. Uh, I'm here to do this uh, lab demonstration so that way you guys have uh, directions for how to go about doing this lab. Uh, in the front you should see on my desk a turquoise basket with syringes. Um, if they have not been passed out yet, take a moment, um, pause the video, and please pass them out. I'll give you about five seconds to quick pause the video and uh, pass them out. Okay, I think that's been five seconds, so hopefully everything, the video was paused, everything was passed out. Everyone should have a syringe. Now, obviously what I'm starting to do here is to help give you your beginning ideas for this particular part of the lab. There are three parts to the lab. Now, granted, you do not have to do three journal entries for this lab. One journal entry is fine, but you will need to include the beginning ideas for part one, part two, and part three, because there are going to be um, questions that you have to answer for part one, part two, and part three. This first part of the lab, um, what I'd like to start with, with your syringe here, I'd like you guys to um, start brainstorming with your syringes ways that you can alter the pressure of a gas in a sealed syringe. So take your thumb and seal the syringe, and I want you to brainstorm some ways um, that you can alter the pressure. And it doesn't just have to be what you can actually do with it right now, as in um, what you think you can do, I mean, just by tinkering with it, but also think in terms of what are some other ways, besides just maybe tinkering with it here, that uh, you could do to actually alter the pressure. Okay? I'll give you another five seconds to stop the video, so that way you can brainstorm some ideas. Once you guys have done that, and you've gotten your ideas up on the board, you can go ahead and restart the video and make sure you have those beginning ideas recorded for your journal. Okay, five seconds. Uh, should have your beginning ideas now. One of the ba main big ideas that hopefully you're able to brainstorm is that you can affect it, first of all, the obvious one being you can affect the volume on here. You see that there are marked increments on this. So you should be able to affect the volume of your um, syringe. So then, for this first part of the experiment, a very, it's basically a very simple idea. What I want you to do is I want you to collect six data points where you are changing um, the volume of the air in the syringe so let's say you could start at 20 milliliters. Um, you could push it in, let's say, to like 18, 16, 14, 12, 10, and that'd probably be enough. Or you can do different increments or something like that. But that will be what you're doing in this first part of the lab is you're adjusting the volume and finding out what is the pressure like as you change the volume. Now, in order to do the data recording for this, you're going to need um, the gas pressure sensor. The boxes are over on this side here. You should see them over here on the uh, um, cabinet table. Um, there are no six boxes there. Um, the six box will be back there when we're done demo I'm done demonstrating with this one. Now I already have everything laid out here, but from the box you only need two. Th you'll only need two things. You'll need the actual gas pressure sensor and the syringe that comes inside of it, okay? So you'll only need those two things. The other syringes can be put back away that you were using earlier. Now, also, of course, you will need the Vernier Lab Pro box. These may be found in the cabinet over here. There are six boxes. Obviously, I've got the sixth box right now, so they're over here. Please make sure that all the material gets returned to its proper box so that way we don't have two of one thing in one box and nothing of another in another box. It tends to make things chaotic when another lab gets set up. Or let's say if you guys are doing this third hour and it's not properly put back ninth hour, then ninth hour is having to scramble all over the place to find their material. 
So please make sure that all material gets back where it belongs, where you found it from originally. Inside the Lab Pro box, you will find the Lab Pro, in which case, you'll also find a USB cord, and you will also find a uh, power cord. Okay, so you can go ahead, um, plug in your power cord to an outlet, plug in your cord to the Lab Pro. When you hear it beep, that's how you know it is turned on, just like it did there. Uh, the one end of the USB cord goes into the side here, into the USB port. Then the other cord for the USB cord goes into the computer. And then nextly, you'll want to take the gas pressure sensor and the cord for it and plug it in to channel 1. Uh, you'll see on the one side is uh, the channels and the other side it has some other things here too, but you'll want to plug it into the side that says channels, plug it into channel 1. Okay. Then, when you are ready, you can open up Logger Pro on your computer, which all of you have installed. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, go ahead and show you, I'm going to get a screenshot for you guys, so that way you know how to start this experiment. Okay, so on the screen here, you'll see the Logger Pro icon. Click on it. Logger Pro should open up. Okay. Now, you'll notice that your um, initial reading, or your initial things that are up are pressure and time. Sorry about the focusing on this. Maybe I can bring it in a little better. But you can see pressure and time. So then what I want you to do is I want you to change that. You need to go to the experiment menu and you need to go and scroll down to data collection. I do apologize for the shakiness of the video. Now you'll notice here that uh, you can change um, the collection information. On the collection information, it currently says time-based. But you can change that, and you can scroll down, and you can do events with entry. It's the next one down. So select events with entry. Okay, so then um, what you want to do is the name. You're, you're going to start with a column. Number of columns is fine. It's one because it'll record the pressure on the other one. Um, what we'd like to do is name this one volume. So capital V O O L U M E and then short name we'll just call it V for volume. Units Unit of volume, as you should know by now, is in milliliters, so small m, capital L. Then I can go down and click on Done. So then now, since this is an event with entry, what I can do is I can start it on the play button, and I can actually start um, collecting my data. So what I have to do here and I'm going to uh, hand the camera off for just a moment. And I'll show you how this gas pressure sensor gets hooked up. Okay, so you can start on um, whatever you'd like to, actually start at the 20 milliliter mark with your syringe. Hook it up to your gas pressure sensor and what it does is it um, comes on and then you can screw it on the rest of the way. So now 
That way it is all set up and ready to go. So now that you've got your events with entry, what you can do is you can adjust the volume and you'll get a pressure reading. You'll see what the pressure reading is. Um, and what you want then want to do once you get an appropriate um, volume that you want, if you go to experiment and keep, it will then ask you to enter in the volume in milliliters. I'm going to push mine in to 15 milliliters. So actually I'm going to cancel for just a moment because I want to make sure it's at 15 milliliters. Okay, so now it's at 15 milliliters, so now I can go to experiment and keep. And I can enter in that my volume is 15 milliliters. And so on my graph here, it shows me 15 milliliters and a pressure of 131. And I can do the same thing for the other five data points that I have on my, um, in my experiment. So that's how you'll run this first experiment. Now the second part of the experiment is very similar to this. One of the things you may have noticed is that we can also, in addition, um, as we're, let's say if we keep this open, we can affect the number of particles of volume. Or we, we can just simply affect the number of gas particles, either by more or less. So then, what I want you to do for the second trial is basically we're going to do the same thing, except this time we are, I'm going to um, change this experiment out here so that way you can see what we're doing. I'm going to quit Logger Pro so that way um, I can bring up a new one. So again, I'll go to experiment, data collection, and I'll click on time-based and scroll down to events with entry. And this time, I want to name my column, we're going to call number of particles puffs. And we'll call it, um, we'll give it a short name of small n, as in n for number of puffs. Um. And for unit, we're just not even really going to give it a, a unit other than, I guess you could say number or you could use the pound sign, um, whichever. In fact, one, I just use the pound sign. If you come up with something better to, to use for number, that's fine. It does not matter to me. So then in this experiment here, what we can do is that we can keep the other things constant while we're simply changing the number of puffs. Um, we can adjust the number of particles while keeping volume constant. Um, specifically, what you're going to do then is you're going to um, adjust the syringe to various volumes while open in the air. Okay, So you can adjust it to whatever volume you want in the air. Okay, so adjust it to whatever particular volume you want when open to the air. Then what you do is you take and attach it to the gas pressure sensor. And you adjust it to a predetermined volume. So let's say you start with um, 20 as being your volume in the open air. Let's say you want to do... Um, Let's say you want to call these um, lines um, puffs. Each one of these could be a, a particular puff of air. So let's say I do, I adjust it to 18. So then just like before, I click on the play button. So it allows me to start to collect data. I adjust my puff button to 18. And then I go to experiment and keep and it allows me to enter in the number of puffs I have which right now it would be 18. I hit OK. So then I could do the very same thing and I could do 
15 puffs. Experiment. Keep. Now I'm at 15 puffs. So again, what I did is I started by, I adjusted my volume of the syringe while it was still in the open air. Then I hooked it up to my gas pressure sensor. And then I adjusted it to a predetermined, um, I adjusted it to a predetermined um, number of puffs. When your adjustment was done, click the keep button, you enter the number of puffs in the syringe. We hit enter and the computer is recording it. Okay, So that's kind of the idea that we're, um, that we're going with here. Um, and actually, what, um, something I want to mention with that is that with this one, actually with both of them, there is one thing I better make sure that gets clarified here. With the number of puffs, the volume that we'd start with here with the number of puffs at the bottom would be zero. So once we adjust it to our particular volume to start with, what the number of puffs that we're adding to the sensor would be zero. So make sure then, so if this is my zero here, then if I'm at 18, 18 would mean that I added two puffs of air to the gas pressure sensor. So that's something I want to make sure I'm changing there. So that's two. And now then, uh, since I went from 20 to 15, that would be five puffs altogether. So five. Okay. So making sure you're making that adjustment. So on the first one, you could just simply enter in um, whatever the, you can enter in whatever the volume is that it records on here for the number and then obviously the pressure will be recorded when you collect keep. For this one here what you're doing is you're starting with your predetermined volume from the open air as being zero. Adjust it and then you're entering in your number of puffs. So each line can be a puff. So you want two puffs four puffs, there'd be four, here'd be six puffs, etc. Okay, that should be everything. Um, hopefully this video has helped to clarify the directions for this lab. Um, so uh, you'll do these two parts of the lab today and collect your data. Um, when you're done, please uh, put all the equipment back away. Make sure that your data is shared with everyone in your group. And also what you can be doing is you can be working on your journals when you are finished. You can be um, entering in your, all of your beginning ideas that you have thus far, and you can also start writing down your procedures. Because these procedures are detailed, and as you know, if you're having a hard time writing out your procedure and your procedure is not clear, you're, you're not going to be able to repeat this experiment. So that would be a great idea because neither one of these labs are going to take very long to do. So I would highly recommend that you be doing that in your free time. Okay, have a great, have a great rest of the day, have a great weekend, and I will see you on Monday.